Hey guys, here's just a reminder. Um, I do have other content other than wrestling. Um, this is my other channel, uh, as you can see. I I tried so many different names for for uh, for for this channel. Uh, start off as Green Party and Socials News, Green Party News, stuff of that nature, and that's why you see like Slack uh, Slack Network presents and other things like that. Uh, now it's basically just I, I'm trying to ex explanation in regards to this basically is um, I feel that I feel now Green Party uh, National Party is a is just as corrupt as the Democrats and Republicans. Uh, a lot more things are coming out in regards to Republicans that have been proven right, but I'm not a Republican and I'm not a Democrat. I am a socialist by policy, by, by socialist by policy, and it seems like majority of the socialist. Uh, Political party parties uh, in the United States are in some way connected with the DNC in some way. And I don't want to be involved in that. So the only thing I can suggest to you if you're an, an independent or anybody else, just my own opinion, I'm going to be doing it myself. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not saying you should, but I'm not going to vote. Um... I I've never donated to uh to any political party in the first place. We've never been I've never been officially a part of any of any political party. Um anyway, my point being is if you don't want the parties the two party system to dictate what you who and what you vote for, you either you either work to get open uh, open primaries in in your state uh, and uh, rank choice paper ballot uh, uh, voting, or don't vote. Period. Because I'm sorry, but the only time they come around wanting to do what you want them to do is when they need your vote, and they've done this for forty plus years. So. I'm not saying you shouldn't, but I'm saying that if you want to change, consider it as far as the non-voting part and working on you know, open primaries and working on getting um, op uh, uh, ranked choice paper ballots because there's a difference between paper ballots and machine ballot and, and machine voting. Machine voting can be easily hacked, supposedly hacked, and easily manipulated, whereas in paper ballots, there's a paper trail. So. Anyway, that's why I gotta do. That's why I gotta say, as far as that part goes, otherwise, this, I'm trying to turn this channel into uh, talking monetary theory. So that's why you see majority of the stuff on here is about MMT. Um, anyway, so uh, please give give the, give this channel a try. If you like the content on there that I continuously put up there, then subscribe. Uh, if you want to donate, you can go you can go to PayPal.me slash uh, Couple leftists, couple GAP network, and uh, donate what you want as far as the part goes, or go to this website, uh, check out my content, uh, all into this content, um, and subscribe, share, like, and yeah. Anyway, be right back. Hey, welcome to Monday's show. This is uh, March, March, <laughs> uh, April fourth. Yeah, April fourth. There we go. Uh, January, March, April. <laughs> anyway, see, <laughs> April fourth. Uh, I wanted to kind of do something that I hadn't done yet. And that is basically this is from, as you can see, the uh, real progressives. Uh, if not here, right now, you know, real progressives. Uh, a quality. Um, if you, I mean, if you're not uh, up to, if you're not following Warren Mosler, uh, Steffi Kelton, uh, if you're not following Mike Norman, or the next best thing, uh, and a prominent. Uh, a knowledgeable website and organization to learn modern monetary theory from it would be real progressives. Uh, they interview countless uh, 
uh, experts in, in uh, modern monetary theory, ask all kinds of questions, uh, make anybody who is watching or listening to them more knowledgeable, uh, make them think and make them learn a lot about uh, modern monetary theory. Um, Mike Norman, uh, he, he pretty much helps you, um, it, I think it's about Pitbull Economics. Uh, he basically helps you uh, learn how to trade uh, uh, using MFT as a lens to, to look at trading on everyday, on, on everyday uh, Wall Street and stuff of that nature. So, uh, you know, uh, check him out. Uh, none of which I'm, I'm getting endorsed by or anybody else like that. It, it's, MFT is a, is a quality um, lens to look through uh, as far as economics goes. If you look at what um, happened during the financial crisis, a lot of people that saw this coming either knew functional finance, uh, also uh, can, can see the writing on the wall, uh, MMTers, uh, quite a few of them actually uh, uh, got that right as early as 2001. Um, anyway, look all that up. Uh, but anyway, this is from the man himself, uh, Warren Mosler. And since I actually haven't uh, been able to get get a thought across to do like a small little video and put on my YouTube channel, um, I thought I would just go from here as as I'm real progresses as, uh, as you can see. But anyways, to see, uh, this is a more complex definition from a prominent MMT or uh, MMT economist. A more complex definition doesn't make the prior definition wrong. So let's see. And this, if you look at what ha was happening in Russia and what other, uh, what the IMF is about, uh, all of this will make sense if, if that if you're not already knowledge, uh, knowledgeable of of uh, the economy. If you if you're already not an economist or whatever else, you know that sort of thing. Uh, first uh, is uh, a sovereign country uh, it has the ability to issue its own currency exclusively. Uh, requires all taxes and related obligations to be uh, extinguished in that currency. Uh, can purchase anything that is for sale in that currency at any time and chooses without financial constraints. That includes all idle labor. Uh, its central bank sets the, uh, the interest rates. The current uh, the currency floats. The uh, government does not borrow in any currency other than its own. This appears solid, but in fact is too wrong. Uh, another, wrong de de uh, another wrong definition. Uh, the big hole in this, and this is coming from the guy who actually you know, brought it forward. Um, uh, a hole, in, okay, so is the external borrowing constraints item six in the list. If a government generally could purchase everything the currency needed in its own uh, wait, uh, country, excuse me, needed in its own currency, then it would indeed be monetarily sovereign. Now, uh, obviously, reading from this, and now we see the author's definition of MS or monetary sovereignty, claiming this is the right definition, extending the obscurity, absurd, absurdity. There we go. But no country is self-sufficient. All countries need imports. So item three on the list is a real uh, herring. Uh, you see, uh, elements of the definition are red, uh, elements of a definition are red herrings. A government may be able to buy anything that is for sale in its own currency, but that doesn't uh, include oil or gas or uh, raw materials for industrial production or, base, or basic foodstuffs. Uh, to buy the to buy those you need U.S. dollars. Indeed, the, these days you are you. I assume that's the consumer. Need uh, dollars for, mo for most imports. Uh, now most consumers buy imports with their local currencies. Currency exchange is generally done by the local uh, importer uh, or the foreign exporter. Uh, most of global trade is conducted in U.S. dollars. Yes, that's often in uh, numerator or uh, numerator. The, the only country in the world that can't always buy everything the country needs is its own in its own currency and therefore uh, never needs to borrow in another currency 
is the United States because it, it is the sole issuer of the U.S. dollar. This is another way of expressing what is known as uh, it, its exorbitant privilege. This definition demonstrates ignorance of the numer uh, numerator con concept and, need and needs like those uh, there is a failure to the to distinguish between the currency of denomination and the currency of denomination uh, of uh, accumulated net financial assets. However, the dark side of this is that the U.S. is obliged to run wide uh, current account and fiscal deficits. That would be the bright side. Imports are rare, uh, are real benefits and exports are real cost. And the net is known as real terms of trade. Because global demand for the dollar for uh, far exceeds U.S. production, yes, a policy designed to support net exports at the real cost of the microeconomic, or economy, excuse me. When it attempts to close these deficits, trade deficits, global trade uh, and investments shrinks, causing market crashes and triggering recessions around the world. Sometimes there is even a recession in the U.S. itself. The U.S. last attempt to run a fiscal surplus ended in a 2001 market crash and recessions. Recession, excuse me. Um, as written, the author is presuming uh, the U.S. proactively targeted fiscal surpluses to reduce their deficits. And I should probably go back here and clarify that uh, he's actually responding to uh, Francis Coppola. There we go. <laughs> I knew I missed something there. But anyway, let's see. Da -da -da. Let's see. Okay. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Let's see. Global trade and investment shrinks, causing market crashes and triggering recessions around the world. Sometimes there is even a recession in the United States. Okay. I've already read that part. Uh, see, as written, the author is presuming the U.S. proactively targeted fiscal surpluses to reduce trade uh, trade deficits. This was not uh, the reason for the surpluses. Those were generated by tax structure along with rapidly increasing private sector deficits due to the tech, Y2K, and real estate man uh, manias. MMT uh, adherents uh, like to cite this as evidence of the eliminating the government deficit as or in, in, in any country will re result in recession. This is stretching things uh, considerably. But this is stretching things uh, considerably. Fred shows uh, us that even in the U uh, damn. U.S. only. Uh, U.S. only one recession in the last century has been preceded by a government surplus. Again, a gross error of logic, uh, saying that eliminating a, uh, a government deficit can result in a recession, is not to say that all recessions are caused by a government surplus. Now I'm guessing that obviously these are the the statements from uh, from from a author uh, from an author of a an article that Warren Moser is uh, replying to, um, and in bulk I'm guessing these are, those are his answers. Um, again, a gross error of logic saying the eliminating eliminating a government deficit can result in recession is not to say that all recessions are caused by a government surplus. Of course, uh, of course, many developed countries do in practice pay for imports in their own currencies. Governments, banks, and corporations meet dollar funding uh, need, uh, meet dollar funding requirements by borrowing in their own currency and swapping into dollars in a financial market. This diminishes the need for dollar denominated borrowing either by government or the private sector. These countries, therefore, have a considerable degree of monetary sovereignty. Uh, I guess this is uh, his, um, the Warren Moses uh, answer. This is just a further expansion of the author's definition of uh, monetary sovereignty. But it is not uh, absolute as it, uh, as it is in the United States. It crucially uh, depends on the stability of their currency and the uh, creditworthiness other borrowers, both of which are a matter of market confidence. 
I guess this is where uh, Warren actually uh, answers, I believe, no point in continuing as the rest is continue, uh, continue to cont uh, attempt to proceed in the logical progression with the, um, with the same compounding breakdowns of logic. MMT is about pure force of logic as per soft currency economics, which this author, Coppola, uh, is apparently unwilling to or incapable of recognizing. Um, okay, feel free to distribute. So let's go back to the main thing here. Um, now, this is the part that I'm, I've been learning as far as the part goes and trying to understand as far as the overall economy, how money works, and where it comes from, and all of those stuff. Uh, to get back to the basics here, um, one issue, uh, issue, uh, issue its own currency exclusively, which means we... We, uh, UK, Canada, Japan, uh, China, I think also, uh, we create our own currency. We're not, we're not dependent on other countries uh, exclusively for our currency and all that stuff. And I don't think it's uh, actually uh, pegged to anything in regards to other countries' um, denomination or monetary denominations. Uh, requires all taxes and, and related obligations to be ex, uh, extinguished uh, in that currency. This is where we saw Russia. Russia has decided. Uh, Russia decided to have like all of the countries that are un unfriendly uh, to um, to open up ruble uh, uh, card. Uh, bank accounts so that when they want to purchase oil gas whatever then they would be paying in ruble so that that's a whole that's a whole reason why they're able to sustain uh that part of the war uh at least that's from what i've seen and that's what it looks like anyway um there aren't i said from the very i said from the very beginning once i realized that jp morgan chase was actually uh was actually processing um their uh debt payments uh in u.s dollars once they were once i realized that they were able to do that i knew they'd be fine because not a lot of their debt is actually in, in u.s dollar so a lot of their debt is actually in rubles which we're able to pay anyway so let's see uh can purchase anything that is for sale in that currency at any time it chooses without financial constraints that includes all idle labor uh, for its central bank sets the interest rate. That's true. I mean, that's what the Fed does. Um, and the Fed is our, is our central bank. Um, the currency flows. In other words, when selling the currency in exchange for other currency, uh, there's a the the rate of the the cost of transferring or exchanging that currency is floating. It all depends on what. I, I guess what the uh, what the market says as far as the value of, of that currency, um, like you know how much is how much is it trading for that sort of thing. Let's see, and the government does not borrow in any currency other than its own. Uh, yes, do we, do we borrow as a country? Uh, yeah, but we don't borrow any other currency. We borrow from our own banking system, central bank, and that's. One of the reasons why there's been that's why uh, QE's been doing uh, been going. Um, have, now, at first, as far as uh, quantitative easing, I was thinking that that, that they were able to uh, like give reserves to banks to make sure that things don't collapse. But that that sounds like it's one of the ways. But another way is when they purchase assets, you know, like uh, markets backed securities and all other stuff, and they're able to buy those from banks and put money back and put money in the system and then every 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 purchase them uh which is repose uh repurchase them to take the money out so which means that they buy the assets then the banks rebuy the assets bring them back bring them back that for loans and stuff like that um well, they have currency on hand for the loans for it to be able to be put in inside the bank. Um, anyway, uh, if you like what you hear, please uh, uh, subscribe. Um, this will also be on my Substack, CalvinTaylor.substack.com. I just wanted to read a little bit of this part right here. Um, Anyways, I will be right back.
Okay. Hey, welcome to Monday's edition of Just Calvin Learning MMT Through a Crowded, uh, Clouded uh, Lens. Um, I look, I, I go and search for these debates uh, between MMTers and mainstream economists, um, whether it be on YouTube or whether it be on paper or, you know, online, I mean. Now, this one, as you can see, is from Stephanie Kelton. Uh, she has a Substack. Uh, I think it's stephaniekelton.substack.com. Uh, I, I highly recommend it. Um, anyway, so uh, Paul Krugman, who uh, is obviously a mainstream economist, uh, apparently uh, him and MMTers actually they agree on a lot of things, but I guess other things they don't, obviously. But in this one, Paul Krugman asked uh, Stephanie Kelton about modern monetary theory. Here are four answers. Oh. Uh, there is a doctrine among mainstream economists holding that one, government deficits push interest rates higher, and two, rising interest rates crowd out private investment. The government can take more of the, econo the economy's financial resources, but only at the expense of lost private investment, this means that running budget deficits has at least some downside. Hmm. Paul Krugman is a believer in this doctrine. I'm not, obviously hmm. Stephanie Jelton is not. And he's asking Stephanie Jelton to explain why. He is responding to a column uh, that she wrote critiquing his view of modern monetary theory. Uh, I guess is, uh, I'm going to, she's going to respond directly to the questions he raised. This, by the way, this is from 2018, so it was a couple of years ago, and so far has been, uh, other than actual blogs from um, uh, Warren Mosler and other people like, people like him, um, uh, I can't always find uh, online debates in regards to uh, uh, you know, papers like this. So it's, it's, it's hard to find. Some, that's why sometimes if you hear me um, or watch me in some ways, uh, try to read and critique myself as far as that part goes. Uh, it's a rarity in regards to, you know, actual uh, question and answer between MMTers and, and non MMTers. Anyway. Uh, are MMT, MMTers claiming, as, Kel, as Kelton seems to, that there is only one deficit level consistent with full employment, that there is no ability to substitute monetary for fiscal policy? Are they claiming that expansionary fiscal policy actually reduces interest rates? Yes or no? Answers, please, with the explanation of how you got these uh, got these answers and why the straightforward framework uh, he laid out ab about, above is wrong. Now, this is, I'm going to go into her answers now uh, overall. Uh, quick response first, followed by explanation behind her, her thinking. Number one, is there only one right deficit level? Answer, no. The right deficit level, uh, right deficit depends on private behavior which changes. MMT was set public spending always to the level required to achieve full employment and then accept whatever deficit may result. Number two, is there, is there no ability to substitute monetary for fiscal policy? Answer, little to none. In a slump, cutting interest rates is weak tea against depressed expectations of profits. In a boom, raising interest rates does little to quell new activity, and higher rates could even support the expansion via the interest income channel. Number three, does expansionary fiscal policy reduce interest rates? Answer, yes. Pumping money into the economy increases bank reserves and reduces banks' bids for federal funds. Any banker will tell you this. Number four. Does MMT accept Krugman's straightforward framework? No, we can come back to this uh, at the end. Uh, is there only one right deficit level? No, because for one thing, MMT will establish a public option in a labor market 
a federally funded job guarantee, thereby ensuring full employment across the business cycle. The deficit then would rise and fall with the cycle as the job guarantee becomes a new stabilizer, automatically moving towards the right size in response to changes in the level of aggregate spending. In the absence of a job guarantee, things get trickier. Leaving monetary and exchange rate policy aside, the government has to allow the deficit to grow where it needs to go in order to accommodate the private sector's net savings desires. If the private sector wants to spend less and save more, the public sector will need to accommodate that desire by, by running a bigger deficit or the economy will be pushing away, pushed away from full employment. Kruger drew up the perfect schematic based on the sector balance framework adapted by MMT to explain all of the 10 years, all of the, of this 10 years ago. Is there no ability to substitute monetary for fiscal policy? Not much. Krugman, see, uh, Krugman sees MMT as saying that fiscal policy can always deliver the right size deficit to maintain full employment. He's challenging that by asserting that you can have any size deficit and still have full employment because the central bank can always establish the right size interest rate to get you there. I disagree. It is true that the Fed can pursue any rate policy it desires. It does not follow, however, the cut that cutting interest rates will work to induce uh, enough spending to maintain full employment. You can't simply assume borrowers will always have the appetite for more private debt, even if you make it really cheap to borrow. Businesses borrow and invest when they're swamped with customers or, ex or expect to be. They don't passively take on more debt simply because the central bank has dangled cheaper credit before, uh, before them. The evidence suggests that interest rates don't matter much at all when it comes to private investment. J.P. Morgan, here and here, uh, the Reserve Bank uh, of Australia here. I'm not really sure what she meant by. Okay, so probably these are examples. Uh, the just press to, press on or some to effect. Let me go double check that. Uh, yeah, they, they, they are links within the story. Uh, the Federal Reserve, uh, also there, uh, and Bank of England here, it is even possible as MMT has shown that cutting rates could further slow the economy because lowering rates cuts government expenditures, interest rates are interest payments, there, thereby exacerbating contra contractionary fiscal policy. This, in fact, uh, what MMT uh, well, MMT suggested when the European Central Bank went to negative rates, which MMT sees as a con contractionary tax, but MMT recognizes that raising rates could offset contradictionary uh, fiscal policy, though in a highly uh, re regressive manner as the interest paid by the government tends to go to those with the higher incomes. Does expansionary fiscal exp uh, policy reduce interest rates? Yes. Unequivocally, you won't see it in the Krugman stylus graphic, uh, which I just below, but it does happen in the real world where the inner bank market exists. Imagine the government is running a trillion dollar deficit, they're sending out check for military weapons, contracting to do massive infrastructure payment rejects, uh, rejects projects, excuse me, and so on. All of those checks get deposited into financial institutions across the country. And each time a check is deposited, the bank gets a credit to its reserve account at the Fed. When you pay your taxes, your bank loses reserves. But with a trillion dollar deficit, there is a huge net infusion of reserves into the banking system. And the central bank takes no action to prevent it from happening. The overnight lending rate, the federal funds rate, will fall to zero bit, fall to a zero bit. Why? Because all banks are flush with no with non-interest bearing reserves and everyone to, is scrambling to lend them to another bank. When everyone's a seller, when everyone's a seller and no one's a buyer, the price goes to zero. To prevent this, the central bank steps in. 
Before the collapse of Lehman in 2008, the Fed conducted open market operations or selling bonds to mop up another, uh, enough reserves to get the interest rate up. This will all coordinate with the, this was all coordinated with, with the Treasury Department on a daily basis, as is explained at, the, at this link. Um, today, the Fed simply pays interest on reserves to establish a positive rate. This doesn't change the fact that deficits in and themselves put downward pressure on the short-term interest rate. Yes, the Fed has a reaction function and it can vote to raise rates in response to perceived inflationary pressures associated with deficit spending, but this is a different matter. This is fighting yes and natural uh, gravitation. Apparently, you can go to Bloomberg and continue the reading this whole thing. Yeah, that that is, this is the problem I've been seeing for the past year and a half. Everybody keeps talking about um, that spending uh, is the, is the problem with this inflation. It's not the spending; it's spending on shit. It, it's you know uh, the supply chain has been disrupted by the pandemic. Disrupted by, in this case, the pandemic. Uh, the war going on, or yeah, war going on between Russia and the, the U.S. Uh, through Ukraine as a as a proxy place, um, stuff of that nature. So all that I means the sanctions are the sanctions, in my view, are attacks because when you sanction a country that we purchase stuff from, that means it's more expensive to bring them in, which means consumers pay more to buy those. Uh, because the the companies are paying more to bring them in. Uh, at the same time, you have the default uh, 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 the labor and every, just pretty much everything else in regards to operating a business. And those are that sort of thing. Um, so right now, we have nothing but inflation based on the supply chain. And, and and because of the lack of wages or lack of up-to-date wages, which I'm sorry right now, 15 bucks is not enough. Right now, we literally, if people want to be able to live productive and healthy lives, you have to at least get 40 to 45, maybe 50 bucks an hour. That's that's what you would have to do in order to be able to have a successful, a successful and productive community and society in regards to that. Um, how you do that is you, in my view, you implement uh, a jobs guarantee, which sets the the federal minimum wage uh, by put down 15 bucks. I still think that's not enough. It's got to go up as far as that part goes. Um, and therefore, you would you, you have enough people being able to afford the inflationary costs right now. You don't have that in most areas, most communities, most uh, age groups. You name it, it's not there. Uh, the people who are the people who are making a uh, hundred thousand or whatever else, they can afford that. But the people making less than that. Are having a hard time making uh, making that, or are having a hard time living it in the first place. So, anyway, that's um, what I want to say as far as that part goes. Um, I maybe uh, it looks like I'll be I maybe uh, doing some work with the world progressive again. Uh, time will tell. But anyway, uh, I'd like to thank you for um, for joining me on this, and uh, yeah. Uh, check that out uh, as you please as far as the part goes um, yeah just uh, if you want to learn MMT and an investment level try uh, uh, looking up Mike Norman because he's worked in the investment community he currently does um, and he has a uh, uh, Mike Norman's MMT on YouTube and also uh, pitbulleconomics.com. I am not associated with him. I do not get paid to endorse, but this, he's a he, he, he knows his shit. Anyways, uh, you guys have a good night, uh, and I will check you out tomorrow. Peace out for now. <laughs>
Hey, how's it going there? Uh, just wanted to update you guys. Um, this is, I'm, I'm bringing this back as far as uh, if you want any part of any merchandise that, I, that I've had in the past or not. Uh, don't, don't forget, you can go up to, you can go up here and order any of this. It's all premium as far as uh, quality. I have a, I have a, I had a mask somewhere around here, but I, I, I still have the, uh, I still have the, uh, the, what was it? Um, sweatshirt, no, a sweat jacket. One of these. This is, I still have one of these. Um, anyway, so yeah, um, check it out if you want. Uh, I have, uh, pillows apparently. And this is the pillows. Yeah, I've got pillows. Uh, three, four different colors. Um, check that out. Uh, and uh, coming up next will be the my uh my main show. Uh, stay tuned. Peace out.